Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this episode I'm actually gonna show how I did what I uh, showcased in my previous episode where I showed you the capabilities of using uh, your s backup screen camera which you can actually use for any other streaming basically whatever you can plug in you can use it for and uh, b b before I do that I want to do a very important disclosure I absolutely discourage anyone to do that for the purpose of driver using it, especially while driving. This is not legal, not right, and not safe. Please don't do that. I'm doing it for sole purpose of A, entertainment, B, I like to do a DUI project, and C, most importantly, I take a lot of um, road trips with my wife and her being a passenger she gets bored after a while so this is the main uh, purpose for me to keep her entertained so that she can watch some movie while we're driving she can maybe play some casual game or you know just keep herself entertained a little bit better than you know just staring at her phone and stuff like this so please don't use this while you're driving if you're the driver don't do that this is for passengers only with that said let's write uh, let's go right into it so the main ingredient in this uh, diy soup is this little part which is a hdmi interface box purposely made for a tesla model s or x um, the only basically difference uh, is the wiring it works for any model s or x even if you don't have uh, uh, mcu2 even if you don't have uh, autopilot hardware 2 or 2.5 or 3 or even 1 even if you don't have any autopilot hardware so pre-autopilot hardware uh, MCU 1 this would still work you can still watch Netflix at the supercharger you can still enjoy gaming you can still do that without spending two and a half thousand dollars for upgrading your MCU depending on the device you're gonna be using you will need this adapter if you are using uh, uh, if you're planning to use an uh, iPhone this adapter will make sure that you connect it to HDMI and at the same time you actually will be charging your phone which is again if you're gonna be using it for a long road trip let's say six hours or whatever and you continuously streaming video well your phone will simply die so you want to keep it charged and you want to plug, want to keep it plugged into HDMI at the same time. This is uh, very highly recommended. Don't buy a cheap knockoff. There's plenty of very cheap knockoffs on Amazon and eBay for like 10 bucks. This one is like $40, but believe me, you do not want to cheap out because a lot of them just simply don't support a lot of uh, video outputs and it's just going to give you a lot of headache. You will think that something wrong with your wiring or any other stuff but this is the main reason why you might have issues so don't chip out by an actual apple one sorry that's the only way the other thing you might need depending on uh, what you actually gonna use for a streaming device is uh, this it's an audio transmitter or receiver bluetooth so let's say um, you would like to use let's go crazy uh, playstation xbox something you know like that like legit gaming uh, for this, how do you do the sound? The, you know, PlayStation not gonna be able to transmit the sound via Bluetooth. So this little device gonna be able you um, to connect to your uh, PlayStation, or let's just use PlayStation for example. Um, and then you can use Bluetooth functionality of this device to connect to your Tesla. And that way you'll have a sound coming from your speakers and the video output coming on your screen. Let's just install it and see how it works. After I connect uh, the other end to OBD port, you see the cable going all the way through. It's uh, sort of like under the steering wheel on the driver's side, closer to the door. After I connect it, I press the button to try to switch channel and let's hear for the click. And that means the box is working, it's trying to switch channel. Obviously nothing switching because, well, we haven't connected anything. Uh, anything else that comes to the video. All right, now let's install it. 
Okay, very first step is to remove the bottom part from over here. Just like that, maybe a little bit more careful than I'm doing it. It's just the clips, but still be careful. Those clips are not uh, very sturdy. All right, after we remove the bottom part, the next step is the side piece. Kind of same thing. Try to use carefully force of your fingers or a pry tool, whatever you're more comfortable with. Okay, little one in the bottom, there you go. They're not that sturdy, but they're annoying, those clips. Come on, there you go. These clips are pain in the butt. And there's no better way to do it, unfortunately. I mean, the pry tool might help, but you know, you still have to use the same amount of force and everything and kind of hope that you don't break the plastic or the clips. I don't have a spare clips. I don't know about you. Okay. Jesus. All right. That part is off. Surprisingly, I didn't break any clips. That is super annoying. All right. I'll put it aside. We don't need that. Woo. I got some cash. All right, next we'll need to remove six screws. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And they all um, gonna be a T20. Now that we removed those six screws, we can just gently remove the glove box. And yes, there's some connectors, which we need to disconnect. Okay, so now we have access to our hardware, AP3 in this case. So this cable, the black one, the second one, we are gonna unplug this. Because this cable is a backup camera. Okay, the cable unplugged. So in order to unplug it, you see there's a little clip on the top. You kind of need to press it a little bit with your fingers. It's kind of difficult to get there, but you know, maybe it was a little bit pressure from like a little bit of a nail or something, and then push it out and you get this. Do not use force. It's, you know, it's pretty fragile. There's a lot of cables and stuff. Don't just, you know, start pulling stuff away. Okay, now we get to start wiring our system. This cable is uh, your reverse camera. So this is directly wired to the camera on your trunk and that's exactly what the car sees as an image. So technically the car will show you whatever you will plug in here, that's what it will show you on a, your reverse camera um, at any given time. And as you know, Tesla shows your reverse camera even while you're driving. So you can use this image at any point you're driving you're not driving does not matter but don't worry you're not gonna lose your functionality of reverse uh, backup camera obviously that would be silly uh, i will show you how to keep that working and this is when our hdmi interface box comes into play we connected our two cables and one of them will connect to uh, the camera that we just unplugged the camera cable come on focus there you go um, and another one we're gonna plug in where uh, the camera cable was plugged in previously into actual um, computer. All right, let's go over the cable setup here as it actually does get confusing. Um, so we took out the black cable, which is this second cable on the top. The first one you see is blue. So the second one, well, now it's not anymore black, but originally this was the cable there, black. This is your uh, rear view camera. So, that rear view camera cable, the black one, we are connecting to this uh, blue turquoise, whatever you want to call this color cable. Um, they all color coded. And actually they have a little bit of a, a pattern on the side, so you're not going to be able to plug in anything different. So don't worry about it. Uh, and then this comes into a video 
out, which is honestly, I kind of disagree. Hey, I'm not an engineer. I'm not gonna argue about it, but personally, this is video in, this is not really video out because the video out, in my perspective, then going back into our computer, but whatever. Uh, so your camera plugs into turquoise cable, uh, here is becoming more blue and it goes into video out and then from video in the green cable going back to original place where uh, the black cable used to be so now I want to also explain a few things about a couple loose cables uh, the rest cables are very self-explanatory it's a uh, power and uh, you know just what's uh, managing the actual interface box but you will see that there is uh, at least uh, few extra cables on each side uh, of the box so those cables are here for um, additional uh, setup which comes with uh, 360 cameras that comes by the same uh, manufacturer I'm obviously not installing this right now so we just leaving it as is and I highly recommend you to uh, tape them over because they actually hot wires they actually have a 12 12 volt in them uh, because they've been powered by a Combus the o OBD so you know just in case tape them over while you're gonna stuck them in all right so now all we need to do is plug our HDMI cable right here and uh, see if the system works okay so that I don't get hit with any uh, copyright claims I'm gonna play my own video hello and welcome to my channel today we're gonna be the sound a very interesting topic which is gaming in your coming from a car there is no delay it's perfectly in sync with the video and here's the beauty part check this out there's a lot starting the car applications and sorry starting the car switch into the drive and nothing happens to our video now when I switch to the reverse you might be concerning about it right let's see what happens instant the sound still coming on let's say I parked I'm done and the video continues the sound sometimes breaking up because like I say it's coming from a two different uh, channels sound coming from Bluetooth and video coming from HDMI so all you have to do with this is uh, just pause it on your car Oh, I pressed too many times and then pressed it and it's all just fine. So what do we do? And again, it's just simply because it's a Bluetooth way, uh, way of working in, in, in a car like that. All right, I'm gonna pause it. Yeah, by the way, all controllers work. Like I can pause it right in the car. I can change the volume in a car, everything. The total cost is around $500 plus uh, well, adapter would cost you about $40 and that's pretty much it. So let's say 550 to kind of round it up and you're going to be able to do this in uh, any Model S or uh, Model X. I am currently not aware of how to make this work in Model 3, but I am working on it. I kind of need uh, to find a donor who is willing uh, to let me play with his car <laughs> but uh, yeah so the only next step uh, you would have here is obviously uh, the cable management what I'm going to do is uh, leave all those cables there behind the glove box that's okay we're just gonna tuck them in with some tape and uh, it's not gonna be an issue the main box I'm gonna leave on a side so that when I remove the side panel it's actually gonna be accessible in case something needs to be changed or you know reverse back to original and then HDMI cable I'm gonna put all the way behind the glove box and I'm gonna put it over here so that in, in my middle uh, console whatever panel you're gonna call it for two main reasons first of all it's extremely easily accessible you can just slide it in and you know you can store your extra phone whatever you're gonna use for your streaming services I'm actually gonna play with a few other devices as well and so it's easy interchangeable for those devices second of all it's very close to your power this is where all your cables with chargers with your 12 volt right here so it, it's the easiest spot to manage stuff and then you close the lid on top and it's just invisible 
All right, and this is it. This is how you do it. You don't have to have an MCU to upgrade. If the only thing that you're looking for is streaming video or uh, web browsing, whatever it is on, on, you know, faster on your screen, there is no delay whatsoever. It's instant because it comes from HDMI cable. There is no wireless connectivity at all. So there is no delay. Um, you can connect any device that could be connected to HDMI as long as you can power it up. I don't know. That's already a separate question. We'll talk about it later. But um, whatever you can plug in at your home to HDMI, you can plug it here. And uh, you can use it in motion with uh, extreme caution for passengers only, please. Let's be smart about it. And it does not uh, impact any of your factory functionality. So this is amazing. I, I'm extremely uh, stoked about it. And uh, hopefully you're excited about it too. Let me know if this is something you're looking uh, forward to doing on your own car. Um, uh, I'm still working on uh, figuring out how to make this work on a Model 3. So stay tuned. If you find this type of content exciting or interesting or, you know, just entertaining, please consider clicking subscribe button and uh, like if you like the video. If you don't, click dislike. I'm not offended, it's okay. Uh, but you know, your interactions with the channel, it actually motivates me to keep doing those videos. Because as you probably noticed, I'm doing them for free. I'm just doing it for a community and uh, just trying to improve the quality of ownership for uh, Tesla. And. Uh, I will see you in the next video. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.